Hey folks, what's up? I'm so happy to see you guys again. So, I recently got to messing around with my old welding rig for kicks. I was totally blown away by what you can do with a standard inverter. Every experiment turned out super engaging and fascinating. I captured some sick slow-mo shots, up to 10,000 frames per second. Even did some thermal imaging. The electrode would get so hot it'd glow white, probably hitting over 1000 degrees Celsius. And man, some of the electrodes just melted from the heat. It was wicked cool. But how could this be useful, you know? I dug through all my junk and found this little piece of wire. Hooking it up to the welding inverter, it didn't just get hot and light up, it also didn't melt. That kicked off today's awesome project. Ordered some right away and after a bit, got delivered this small coil of wire. Just ordered it 3 meters long I'll even have half left over, and it's 3 millimeters thick. It's got a bunch of metals in it mainly iron, but also chrome, aluminum, nickel, titanium, manganese, silicon, carbon, calcium, sulfur, even cerium and phosphorus. I twisted it into this coil, using a pipe with a 58 mm outer diameter as a mandrel. The wire material is called Canthal A1, short for iron, chrome, aluminum. Heated it up to 14 Celsius. Then came the hunt for affordable and accessible insulation. I had this piece of aerated autoclave concrete. Tried heating it with my gas torch and the results were pretty solid. The thermal camera wasn't quite calibrated for high temps, but it was clear enough. Decided to use it. Picked up a couple of blocks from the local construction store. Grabbed some metal brackets for the workshop while I was at it. Time to settle in there. Now, just need to clear the snow in the parking lot and get started on the project. My mother-in-law came over for the weekend, forgot her ride.
everything's ready for testing. Started with the minimum settings on the MMA welder because I had no idea how the tests would go, haven't done anything like this before. I'll gradually increase the current. Alright, connected the ground and electrode holder to the furnace. Set up the thermal camera to visually monitor the furnace heating. At 50 amps, the metal started glowing in just a few seconds. After a few minutes, you could fry potatoes or boil water right in the shop. Or even use it as a small workshop heater. But the main goal of this furnace isn't heating or cooking. I made a crucible for it, for comfortably and conveniently melting different metals. The multimeter with a thermocouple showed over 1000 degrees Celsius and maxed out. The cost of the furnace was about $10. Everything turned out super cheap and super fierce. Friends, the best way to thank the author is just a simple like. Share the video links on your social networks, let it help people. All the useful links from the video, as always, are in the description. Wish you and your loved ones well. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the channel.